overclocking. A basic 10700K overclock, all core of 4.9 gigahertz, a free overclock for anyone really. Now this is your overclocking guide for any desktop with a 10700K processor. We'll go through the basic settings for a light overclock. We'll get to a 4.9 gigahertz overclock and it should be easily accomplished with any motherboard, any system, as long as you have adequate airflow. I'll be using an ASUS Maximus Formula 12, but honestly, any motherboard can do this. A lot of the settings that I'll discuss can be ported over. This guide will cover ASUS Multicore Enhancement on with hyperthreading enabled, ASUS Multicore Enhancement on with hyperthreading disabled, ASUS Multicore Enhancement off with hyperthreading enabled, and finally, ASUS Multicore Enhancement off with hyperthreading disabled. Memory overclocking will not be covered in this video. The settings found in your motherboard's BIOS utility can vary. Now it's important to consult the manual if you're uncertain. When you enter the BIOS for the first time, it will look something like this. The room temperature is a toasty 28 degrees Celsius, no AC, and it is what it is. I use a Kraken Z73 by NZXT as the CPU's radiator. My retail CPU is binned, and I have been running my PC in a huge Corsair 1000D tower. It was meant for another project, but this is what I run right now. It likely helps maintain a cooler motherboard temperature. Also, this may counter the room's temperature of 28 degrees to be closer to a 22 degrees from a cooling perspective. By default, many settings are set to auto. With the ASUS AI Overclock Tuner, I'll be setting this to XMP2. Again, this is more for the memory and unrelated to CPU overclocking. The clock frequency and PCI frequency will remain at 100. Under ASUS Multicore Enhancement, make sure it's set to Auto, Let's BIOS Optimize. SVID Behavior, set it to Auto. AVX Instruction Core per Negative Offset, set it to Zero. CPU Core Ratio, set to Sync All Cores. All Core Ratio Limit, set it to 49. Scroll down a little bit to CPU SVID support. Set that to disabled. Go to Digi plus VRM. Change CPU load line calibration to level four. Go back to the previous menu. Scroll down to the ring down bin section and set it to enabled. Set the minimum CPU cache ratio to 43 as well as the max CPU cache ratio to 43. Set the B clock aware adaptive voltage to disabled. Set the CPU core slash cache voltage to manual mode, and then set CPU core voltage override to 1.35 volts. Go to exit and save changes and reset. Let's launch HW Info 64 and Prime 95. HW Info 64 is a hardware monitor app to monitor your system's temperature, voltage, fan speed, and more. Prime 95 can heavily test your CPU usage. We will not be stress testing ABX, but will stress test everything else on the processor. Both links will be in the video description. We'll test using the small setting for the highest stress test. Make sure to disable ABX. Also, don't run other apps while you're testing your CPU. We'll use Prime95 for 10 minutes or so. If any of the cores stop, Prime95 will flash in the taskbar, as well as an indicator which will state next to the core, not running or not working. If your PC freezes, then you'll likely either blue screen or have to manually restart your PC. The test is done and the CPU gets to a toasty 85 degrees Celsius. Let's run the next test with hyper threading off. Before I forget, one thing I left out of the first part of the video is turning off speed step and C states. This is an optional step, but creates more of a consistent performance for daily use. However, running Prime95 will simply run at C0 or the highest performance possible. Let's get back into disabling hyperthreading. Simply enter your BIOS again. Go to Advanced. Go to CPU Configuration. Find hyperthreading and disable it. Save settings and reset. Let's rerun the test. 
once again using HWinfo64 and Prime95. As you notice, with hyperthreading disabled, CPU temperatures are down almost 5 degrees Celsius. This can make a difference if you decide to overclock to a higher frequency without hyperthreading. Hyperthreading is a virtual thread which can be used in some scenarios. Some apps take advantage while others don't. The conclusion after 10 minutes is a 5 degree difference, or we ended up at 80 degrees Celsius. Now let's rerun the first test without ASUS's multi-core enhancement. In the BIOS, find ASUS multi-core enhancement and select Disabled. Enforce all limits. Note this feature is for ASUS motherboards, but other manufacturers may use other names. For instance, MSI uses the name Game Mode. Go to Advance, go to CPU Configuration, find Hyperthreading, and enable it. Save settings and reset. As we rerun the first test, there's a slight increase in temperature. We finished at 88 degrees Celsius. Now for the last test, let's go back in the BIOS and disable hyperthreading. Go to Advanced, go to CPU Configuration, find hyperthreading and disable it. Save settings and reset. As we rerun the last test, the temperature is similar to the second test. We finished at 80 degrees Celsius. Conclusion time. Anyone should be able to get this overclock to work. Now you don't need my case, but having a cooler room temperature certainly helps. Disabling hyperthreading is the way to go for higher frequencies. ASUS multi-core enhancement helps, but it is certainly not required. What did you think of this video? Let me know in the comments. Would you like to see a 5 GHz video on the 10700K? Does the topic of overclocking interest you? Let me know. Suggestions for future videos are also welcome. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as well as my new Discord channel. You can find the links in the video description. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, and if the topics like tech, hardware, or gaming interest you, feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. I've posted a couple of suggested videos for you to watch. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.